morning, Grace family. Let's all stand and worship today. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a key. Let every heart prepare him room. In heaven in nature sing. And heaven in nature sing. And heaven in heaven in nature sing.
from heaven, you came running, there was mercy in your eyes, to fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word, from a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. Let's just lift our voices today. Oh, praise the Father, praise the Son. We praise the Spirit, three and one. Oh, God of glory, majesty, we praise forever to the King. to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died yeah. oh. we praise the Father praise the Son we praise the Spirit we Praise the Spirit, three 
For you set the edge of time, foundations of the earth and sky. You saw it all and said it was good. The joy was set before your eyes. You knew that you would give your life. You saw it all and said it was good. The heavens roared, the earth stood still. His final breath he tore the veil. The angels sang, Holy is His name. Defeated death, He broke the grave. Our hope returned, the lost are saved. We lift our voice in never ending praise.
you've come to adore you, God. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ, the prophet spoke. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. Father, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus, wonderful counselor, everlasting father. Prince of Peace, Mighty God, 
Emmanuel so that you could come and be with us. Not to just be with us, but to save us. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We're so, we're so just thankful for Jesus today. I'm so thankful that you are with us. I'm so thankful, Lord, that when we draw near to you, you draw near to us. And as we take this time to just set our hearts toward you, just to turn heavenward, that you meet us right where we're at. And so we honor you this morning, Father. Jesus, Jesus, would you be glorified in our midst. Jesus, would you be magnified. Jesus, would you give us direction. Jesus, would you be revealed. It's in your name that I pray. And everybody said, Amen and amen. Why don't you greet somebody around this morning, welcome them, and bless them today. Came out in a new robe. I was buried there for too long. Now I come alive in the one who has conquered it all. Walked out of my grave clothes and I came out in a new robe. I was buried there for too long. Now I come alive in the one who has conquered it all. Everything me made these dry bones come alive. He conquered them. Oh, he breathed in me, made these dry bones come alive, he conquered death, and because he did it, I can do it too. When I walked out of my great clothes, and I came out in a new robe, I was buried there for too long, now I come alive in the one who has conquered it all. I walked out of my grave clothes and I came out in a new robe. I was buried there for too long. Now I come alive in the one day. All right, all right, check, check. All right, all right, power clap on three, one, two, three. So bad, not good. Power clap on three, one, two, three. Praise God, there we go. Now I know you guys are paying attention. Doesn't it make you feel good that I like, I do that with youth students and kids, and so I make you adults do that? <laughs> it's gotta be good. So I'm gonna do a connection card with you guys real quick. Um, first thing I wanna mention is if you, you're in the front row, there should be a basket underneath, but if you'd like to reach out in front of you, there's pockets, and then pull out this connection card. And basically what it is is this, if it's your first time, we'd love for you to mark your, uh, there's a little box that you can mark. We'd love for you to mark that because we believe it's not an accident that you are here and we just want to send you a token and a gift of our appreciation saying thank you for coming. We're not going to sell your information. We're not going to give it away to anybody. This is just to know that you are here. Um, a couple things I want to mention is right here is a prayer request and a praise report. So there's about a prayer team with about 30 people, and we just pray for you guys each and every day earnestly. So if you are going through something, I want to encourage you to just put that down there. That way we can pray for you and just contend and stand in the place knowing that God is faithful and he's going to do something. Um, the last thing I want to mention is offering. And I've got a scripture here, and if you want to turn to... 2 Corinthians 8, verse 7. 
But as, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, also excel in the giving of grace. One thing that I can say about grace is you guys are a giving church. And with that, I'm so thankful and so blessed to be a part of this family because you guys worship. Giving is an act of worship. And it's just so awesome to see you guys so willing to worship God because he deserves it. Knowing that the money you give is for the kingdom. And so with that, I just want to pray. And dear Father, I just thank you for each and every heart in here. I just thank you for how faithful you are and who you are and how you are going to change lives. Lord, I pray as today that there's seeds planted that we can trust in the harvest to come because you are a good God who is faithful and can stand in the gaps of disappointment, stand in the gaps of uh, whatever it is. Father, we just pray that you continue to work through us, use us. And Lord, we praise you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Perfect. We have a video and then we have a surprise for today. Good morning, Grace. Hayden here. I want to take a minute to let you know what's happening here at Grace. On December 24th, we'll be having Christmas Eve services at 4 and 6 p.m. And on Christmas Day, we'll have one service at 10 a.m. Young adults, that's right. If you're between the ages of 18 and 30, you're invited. Thrive is an excellent place to connect and be filled with a message, worship, and yes, even food. See you there at 6 p.m. Youth students and parents are Eve Eve Bash, will be December 30th. We'll be going to Avatar, Way of the Water, and then going to a public skate following the movie. You have to sign up through our website and the cost will be $25. You don't wanna miss out. Lastly, we'll be holding a Focus First Conference here at Grace, January 12th through the 15th, with Jessica Tate and Gerald Murphy bringing the word. We'll also be having our very own Abby Carter and our dear friend Barrett Watts leading us in worship. All of these amazing people are joining together to have an experience with God in a very real and powerful way. You don't want to miss out on this awesome event. More information on these and other events can be found at carneygrace.com. That's all we have for you this morning. Enjoy the rest of service. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Matthew 2.10.
They asked, Where is the one who has been born, King of the Jews? We have saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. Matthew 2.2 2. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Titus 2.11 
What an incredible job by our kids. Come on, give it up one more time as they head downstairs. <clears throat> and hey, as they are going, all of you middle school students that would like to go to Grounded, you are dismissed. Pastor Ty is going to meet you downstairs, and uh, he's making his way. And if you would like to go through step three of the growth track today, and uh, we're going to learn all about leadership Pastor Chris is in the hallway right now, and he'll meet you downstairs as well. So if you want to go to Grounded or Step 3, you can do that. The rest of you get to stay and listen to me, I guess. So that's how that works. And as they're doing that, check out this video. Upon seeing the bright star of Bethlehem in the sky, three wise men from the east began their journey to find he who has been born king. They followed the star to the place where baby Jesus lay in a manger. They had arrived with one purpose, to worship him. The wise men each presented their gifts. Gold for the everlasting king, frankincense for the prince of peace, and myrrh for the mighty warrior. This Christmas, we'll reflect on the powerful, true meaning of those gifts and ask ourselves, what gift will I offer to Jesus? Good morning. God's good all the time. Amen. Hey, I'm so glad you joined us today, uh, whether you're Grace is your home, or you're visiting with us today because maybe some grandchildren sang or some friends sang. Thanks for joining us at Grace today, and uh, we're just glad that you're with us this morning. Uh, you know, Christmas is one week away. Are you ready? Yeah. Everybody's ready. Christmas ready. Week when Nikki says no, she says nope, nope, not at all. Uh, one week away. So, um, one second here. Um, next week, or I should say this week. Since today's Sunday, heading into this week, Christmas Eve, we'll be celebrating here at Grace and um, with our traditional Christmas Eve service, and that will be at 4 and 6 uh, Saturday night. And then we are having church on Christmas Day for those that would like to join us. Um, we just, uh, it is Jesus' birthday, and so I want to celebrate Jesus' birthday, or at least the day that we think that we're going to honor him on. It probably wasn't anywhere near December 25th, but that is the day we're going to honor him on and uh, celebrate his birthday. If you want to join me uh, and worship him on Sunday morning, uh, with, uh, like we normally do, we're going to have one service at 10 o'clock. And, um, and then also, I don't know if we really have announced this or not, but at New Year's as well, we're having one service at 10 o'clock. And... Um, just no one will come together as a big family. We'll have a family service next Sunday. Uh, kids will be with us. It'll be about an hour long. We'll just have some fun. We'll sing some songs. We'll, we'll sing happy birthday to Jesus, and, um, and we'll have a good time. So join us next week. And when you think about Christmas, you know, one of the things we think about a lot is just gift giving and giving and receiving of gifts. And so I'm in a series called The Gift, talking about Jesus being the gift. That is why we give and receive of gifts is because of Jesus and um, the gift that was given to us. And Jesus, when he was born, the, uh, we read last week about these wise men, or magi, who were astrologers, who had saw this star in the sky, and um, they knew it represented that the Messiah, the King of the Jews, was coming. I don't think they really knew what that meant, but they knew that's what it meant to some degree, that, that they traveled for two years. Two years. Very inconvenienced. I mean, most of us couldn't just like, all right, we're going to travel for two years. For two years, they traveled looking for this star until they found Jesus when he was about two years old outside of Bethlehem, and they presented to him gifts of gold, of frankincense, and myrrh. And as they brought these gifts, they represent different aspects of who Jesus is. And within the, the deity of Jesus, coming as God to be fully man, fully man, fully God. And last week, we talked about the gift of myrrh, and how myrrh was really in embalming spices that they would use that really was pointing towards the death of Jesus, that he would be a sacrificial servant for us by laying down his life for us. It was pointing to the fact that Jesus is a prophet, one who was a prophet for us. So last week we talked about Jesus, our prophet. And today we're going we're gonna to talk about frankincense. Frankincense is, a, um, is an oil and a perfume uh, that... that 
um, the priests would use in, in their priestly duties, but it's, a, it's something that really um, affects the inflammation and ar- arthritic pain. It was one of the first essential oils. It really was, and uh, still is today. And so when they brought frankincense, why would they do that? They really did it because it represented Jesus' deity. And uh, as this incense that was traditionally burned in the temple, they would bring it into the temple and they would wave this frankincense and it was an aroma being released up into heaven. It's what the priests would do. It was not native to the region. And to bring it in from the east was very costly. And so when they did that, they were representing Jesus' deity, that he wasn't just our prophet, but that Jesus is also our priest, our high priest. And so I want to talk to you today about Jesus being our high priest and that frankincense, the gift that was given, represents that in our life. And how is Jesus our high priest? That's what I want to look at today. But before I jump into that, I want to keep looking through the Christmas story. So we're kind of working in reverse order. Obviously, next week is Christmas where we will read the part about Jesus' birth. Um, Last week, we read about two years after his birth. Today, we're going to read about the story of the shepherds. And so if you want to grab your Bible that's uh, maybe right, right with you underneath, uh, your chair back, a chair if you would like one and would like to follow along with us, you can, you can read out of Luke chapter 2, and that's uh, found on page 583. And I want to read the story about the shepherds because it has to do with Jesus being our priest. And then I want to talk about the priesthood of Jesus. So Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 8. Are we Ready? In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were very pleased. They were terrified, right? I mean, if an angel showed up and the glory of the Lord showed up, you'd be terrified as well. They were terrified. And the angel said to them, don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all, say all, all the people. Not just the Jews, but all the people. I come bringing good news of great joy for all the people. Verse 11, today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. The Messiah, the Savior. The the angels were telling them, the Messiah, the Savior has come, and he was born in the city of David. Verse 12, this will be the sign for you. When you get there, you will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem. They didn't wait. The the angel had just visited them. The Messiah was coming. Hey, John, will you turn me down just a little bit back there? The Messiah was coming, and in that, they said, let's go right away to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And after seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. So here's these shepherds outside of Bethlehem, which is just outside of Jerusalem. So they're between Jerusalem and Bethlehem, most likely. And these shepherds are, we believe, they probably were shepherds that were tending to sheep that were dedicated to, for the temple. In other words, they were raising sheep that were spotless, without blemish, that were perfect. They were taking really good care of them because they were going to the temple to atone for the sins of mankind. In the Old Testament, in the law, that blood had to be shed for the forgiveness of sins. Pure, innocent, spotless blood had to be shed. As so they would take these innocent lambs, they would take them to the temple and it would be a bloody mess. And they would sacrifice them so that the sins of the people would be forgiven before God. These shepherds were taking care of those sheep, most likely. And and this angel arrives, and a host of angels arrive, and they say, listen, I want to tell you today that the Messiah has been born right over here at the city of David. 
the Messiah, the Savior. That's what they knew a Messiah was coming one day. They knew the Messiah would come, and one day, raising these spotless lambs would come to an end. And what did they do? They rejoiced, and they ran, and they went to see this baby Jesus, and they declared what they'd seen and heard. Now, last week, we read about these wise men who were very inconvenienced and took two years. They didn't let inconvenience keep them from worshiping God. And here are these shepherds that were just a, a mile away or so. They ran to Bethlehem. They ran and found Jesus, who was there as a, as a baby. And what happens when you encounter the glory of God? What do you do when you encounter the glory of God? Have you encountered the glory of God before in your life? What do you do when you encounter the glory of God? For some of you, you encountered Jesus at some point in your life and you surrendered your life to him and you encountered him and something changed in you and it brought great joy. Because that's what happens when you're forgiven of your sins. Great joy comes. And they encounter great joy and what did they do? They, went, they ran praising and glorifying God. Have you ran and praised and glorified God when you encounter his glory? Some of us are, well, inconvenience keeps us from worshiping like the wise men. Others of us, we encounter the glory of God and it doesn't change us. It should change us. It should bring us to the place where we live a life glorifying and praising him. This is Jesus, our high priest. So I want to talk about Jesus, our high priest today, but, but when you think about the priests, so the priests were ministering in the temple from Moses down to Aaron and they became Levitical priests and in the temple, these, these priests who were, who were um, Levites from the tribe of Levi that were set apart to be priests, to minister unto the Lord, they knew this is what we are going to do with our life. There wasn't a question to what their purpose was. They came from the tribe of Levi. They were going to be Levitical priests, and they were going to minister the, the, the ceremonies and, and, the, and, and wave the frankincense. And they were, going to, they were going to come and bring the lambs in. And they were going to slaughter them. And they were going to wash. And they were going to go and present themselves. And that's what they did. They were fulfilling the covenant of God. The Levitical priests were there to fulfill the covenant of God. And then in that, they also would come and pray for the people. They would pray for the people and they, they would pray for the atonement or the forgiveness of sins for the people. Those are the things that those priests would do. So in Hebrews chapter 10, it talks about Jesus, who is our high priest, and then we're going to work our way backwards. But I just want to read this to you and then I'll have you turn somewhere in a minute. Hebrews 10.10 10 says this, By this will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Every priest stands day after day ministering and offering the same sacrifices time after time, which can never take away sins. It covered sins, but it didn't take them away. But this man, after offering one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. He is now waiting until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected how long? forever those who are sanctified. This is Jesus, our high priest. Now the high priest, there was the Levitical priest and then there was the high priest. And the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies one time a year. So there, in, 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 he'd go from the holy place into the Holy of Holies one time a year to, to, to atone for the sins of the Israelites for the whole year. So they had this big celebration, and they would go in, and he, he would go in and atone. He would go into where the Ark of the Covenant was, and he would go present himself on behalf of all of the people. The priesthood, he would represent himself on behalf of all of the people so that sins would be forgiven. Well, one time, and we don't know, maybe it was never more than one time, but at least one time God rejected the sacrifice. And what happened to the high priest? He died. How did they know He died. He didn't come back out, and a few days later, he probably got stinky. I don't know if they lassoed him in there and pulled him out. I don't know what happened, but they got him out of there. So then after that, every high priest, once a year when he would go in, they would tie a rope with bells on him so that, that if they thought, well, if he dies, we, want, we don't want to do that again. We're going to pull him out of there. 
And we don't know if that ever happened more than once. We know it happened at least once. That's why the bells were there. But this high priest, every year, for year after year after year, for hundreds of years, hundreds of years this had happened through the line from Moses to Aaron, through the tribe of Levi, the Levitical priests, every year they would go in and atone for the sacrifices. Once a year, this high priest would go in. And now this is saying Jesus is our high priest. I want to read to you something that I think could be really significant. Now, this, I'm going to share something with you. I'm going to read a bunch of passages of Scripture here. And it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to challenge you to like hang in with me, okay? So if you want to turn, you can turn to Hebrews chapter 7 in your Bible. You can also follow along on the screen. But Hebrews chapter 7, that's on page 682. And I'm going to read this whole chapter about priesthood to you. And there's a couple interesting things about priesthood and how Jesus fulfills this for us. There's, a, there's, there, there's just a, a good moment here to recognize where you belong. Where you belong, what Jesus has done for you and, and him dying for you and you receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, where you belong. Okay, so here we go. Hebrews chapter seven, starting in verse one. It's gonna talk about this guy, Melchizedek. Okay, Melchizedek was a priest to God. We don't know where he came from. We don't know where he, where, where he was from, but we know he was a priest, and we're going to read some things about him. So here's what it says. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of God most high, met Abraham and blessed him as he returned from defeating the kings. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, his name means king of righteousness, then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Now, who do you know that is king of righteousness and king of peace? Jesus is king of righteousness and king of peace. We don't know that Melchizedek is Jesus. Most likely not. Could have been. But this guy was like Jesus as far as being righteous and walked in peace. Now listen, it goes on and says this. He was without father or mother or genealogy. They don't know where he came from. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, they don't know where he went but resembling the Son of God. This doesn't say he was the Son of God, but he resembled the Son of God or resembled Jesus. He remains a priest for how long? Forever. And we just read about Jesus is gonna remain priest forever. But here it says Melchizedek remains a priest forever. Now consider, verse four, how great this man was. Even Abraham, the patriarch, gave a tenth of the plunder to him. I wanted to go somewhere else. Just about Abraham last week, I remember we are, we are, Jesus came to fulfill as a prophet. Remember last week I said he came as a prophet to fulfill that we would be, become part of the genealogy of Abraham, that we are sons and daughters in the genealogy of Abraham. That's why Jesus came. So listen, Abraham, we're in the line of Abraham. Abraham offered a tenth, went and gave a, we know a tenth means what? Tithe. He gave a tithe, that's the first place we see this, to Abraham, or to Melchizedek. He gave it to Melchizedek. It goes on and says, the sons of Levi, who, who received the priestly office, have a command according to the law to collect a tenth from the people, that is from their brothers and sisters, though they have also descended from Abraham. But one without this lineage collected a tenth from Abraham. So the priests collect from the people representing the line of Abraham, and the, the priests collect a tenth, that's what they do, but it says, listen, this started first with Abraham, who is collecting it from Melchizedek, who is, is more than this lineage. And blessed the one, it says, but the one with this lineage collected a tenth from Abraham, Melchizedek, and blessed the one who had the promises. Who had the promises? Abraham. Abraham, the father of many nations, the promise that God gave Abraham that we are grafted into because of Jesus. Now, this, this, this is gonna spin you a little bit to hang on to where we're going. Without a doubt, the inferior, which would be the Levitical priesthood, is blessed by the superior, the Melchizedek priesthood. In the one case, men who will die receive a tenth, Levitical priests. But in the other case, Scripture testifies that he lives, Melchizedek. And in a sense, Levi himself, who receives a tenth, has paid a tenth through Abraham, for he was still with him, his ancestor, when Melchizedek met him. Now listen to this note in my Bible from Dr. Tony Evans. It says, and notice this, he didn't, 
he didn't tithe, speaking of Abraham, he didn't tithe to get a blessing. He tithed out of thankfulness for the blessing he received. That's why we give. We give out of thankfulness for the blessing we've received. It says, it is because of Jesus' continuity with the Melchizedekian priesthood that is legitimate for the church to receive tithes today. They are, in fact, a tangible indication of submission to our great high priest who has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing, it says in Ephesians 1. So, moving on from that, talking about a superior priesthood. We got these two priesthoods, Melchizedek, which was perfect, without spot or blemish, righteous and full of peace, Levitical priesthood that was following in the line of Abraham and Moses to fulfill the law. And we're going to contrast the two of them here. Verse 11, now if perfection came through the Levitical priesthood, for on the basis of it the people received the law, what further need was there for another priest to appear? Like, if that priesthood through, through the Levites, the Levitical priesthood, if that was perfect, why would we need another priest? What would we need another priest to appear? Said to be according to the order of Melchizedek, we're talking about Jesus now, and not according to the order of Aaron. It's saying that Jesus is in the order of Melchizedek, king of righteousness, king of peace, not in the order of the Levitic, Levitical priests king that came through Aaron. I'm going somewhere. I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, this is way too deep for me. Listen, we're going to get somewhere. Verse 12. For when there is a, listen, this is powerful. When there is a change of the priesthood, there must be a change of the law. No longer the Levitical priesthood in all of the rituals and regulations, but now the Melchizedek priesthood that comes through Jesus which is full of grace. No longer, if you're changing priests, then there has to be a change of the law. If you're changing priests, we could still be in the line of the Levitical priesthood today. But Jesus came, and the priesthood changed, and because of that, we're no longer under the Levitical priesthood. We are under the priesthood of Jesus, the priesthood of the King of Righteousness and King of Peace. This is really good news. You may not understand it, but it's really good news. It's all right. I'm still, I've been wrapping my head around it all morning. For the one, these things are spoken about belong to a different tribe. A different tribe. The Levites were a tribe. One of the 12 tribes, they, right? The one we're talking about is from a different tribe. No one from it has served at the altar. Which, tri which tribe is Jesus from? Judah. Now it is evident that our Lord came from Judah, and Moses said nothing about that tribe concerning priests. We've changed tribes. We moved out of religion into relationship. We moved away from the law into grace. Come on, this is good news. Verse 15, and this becomes clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears who did not become a priest based on legal regulation about physical descent. He didn't descend through Levites, but based on the power of an indestructible life. Come on, that's good. For it has been testified, this is a messianic prophecy, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Verse 18, Jesus is out of the order of Melchizedek. So the previous command is annulled. The previous command, the law, is annulled because it was weak and unprofitable. For the law perfected nothing. But a better hope is introduced through which we draw near to God. Because there's a better hope, we can draw near to God. You don't have to go in there fear and trembling with bells tied to your leg thinking you might get struck down. You get to go and draw near because there's a better hope. None of this, at verse 20, none of this happened without an oath. For others became priests without an oath. In other words, they were born into it. But he became a priest with an oath made by the one who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. This is what God said to Jesus, you are a priest forever. Verse 22. Because of this oath, Jesus has also become, who listen to this, the guarantee of a better covenant. He has become the guarantee of a better covenant. Now many have become Levitical priests 
since they are prevented by death from remaining in office. (laughs) In other words, they're going to die and their office is going to come to an end. But because he remains forever, he holds his priesthood, how long? Permanently. Therefore, because he's a permanent priest, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him since he always lives to intercede for them. He came to save completely. He didn't come to save you partially. He didn't come to save you a little bit. He came to save you completely for anyone who comes to God through him. There's only one way to come to God. It's through Jesus. Those who come to God through Jesus will be saved completely and and he's interceding for you today. He's praying for you. My note here says, Dr. Tony Evans says, he's not talking about being saved in terms of forgiveness of sin and eternal life here. He's talking about being delivered from and through trials and circumstances in this life. Jesus' full-time job is to intercede for believers and to rescue them from the power of sin, Satan, and adverse circumstances as they draw near to him. Verse 26. We're going to finish this chapter. And a little more. For this is the kind of high priest we need. This is the kind you need. One that's holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Now that's the kind of priest you need, right? One that's holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, exalted above the heavens. He doesn't need to offer sacrifices every day as high priests do. First for their own sins, then for those of the people The Levites, they had to go offer sacrifices for their own sin and then for the sins of the people. It was one big bloody massacre all day long. He did this once for all time when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who are weak. But the promise of the oath which came after the law appoints a son who has been perfected forever. All right, let's finish this. Chapter eight, just six verses. Now the main point of what is being said, I could have just jumped to here, right? Just get to the point. The main point is this. We have this kind of high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle that was set up by the Lord and not man. This was set up by God, not by man. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it was necessary for this priest, we're talking about Jesus, also to have something to offer. What did he offer? His life. Now, if he were on earth, he wouldn't be a priest since there are those offering the gifts prescribed by the law. These serve as a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things as Moses was warned when he was about to complete the tabernacle. For God said, be careful that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. Verse six. But Jesus has now obtained a superior ministry. And to that degree, he is the mediator of a better covenant which has been established on better promises. He's the mediator of a better covenant established on better promises. Jesus, our high priest, he makes atonement for our sins. He made atonement for our sins. He prays for us and he establishes a better covenant. The Levitical priesthood was one in which all these rituals and regulations had to be done, sacrifices had to be made, hard work had to happen, that maybe their sins would be atoned for and maybe the high priest would die. But Jesus comes for a better covenant and says, we're doing away with that old thing. I'm coming as a perfect sinless man, holy and innocent, and I'm gonna establish a better covenant because when the priesthood changes, the law has to change. You're not under the law anymore, but you're under grace. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. We're under grace. So how do we let Jesus be our high priest? Well, the first thing is if he's gonna be our high priest, that means that we need to approach him. We get to approach him because our sins have been forgiven. We've been cleansed. You don't have to turn there. I'll read to you out of Hebrews chapter four in verse 14. It says, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us 
hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way. He's gone through it. As we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us approach the throne of the law. Let us approach the throne of grace with boldness. In other words, you don't have to go with fear and trembling. That high priest before, I mean, can you imagine after the first one died? And they tie that bell on him, and they've done everything right. They brought in all the spotless lamb, and they're like, is this lamb really spotless enough? They're trying to figure out why that previous high priest died. What did they do wrong? They're inspecting everything. They're making sure it's perfect, and he's getting ready to walk through that curtain and walk into the Holy of Holies, and he's going in thinking, oh my goodness, am I going to die right now? With fear and trembling, because that's how most people think they have to approach God. I'm such a mess up, I've screwed up, I've done something wrong, and now God doesn't think I'm worthy, and now I don't even know what I'm gonna do, and we jump back over to the Levitical priesthood, and we try to earn our way back in. We try to do all these things to to make things right out of the Levitical priesthood, and Jesus says, no, I've come that there would be a new priesthood, the priesthood of Melchizedek, that you could enter my throne, you could come and visit me with boldness, you could come to the throne of grace, so that you might receive Mercy. Amy, need mercy today? I need some mercy. What's mercy? You don't get what you deserve. Amy, have something last week, last month, last year, you got something you deserve? Mercy. You might receive mercy, but you don't get what you deserve. And you would find grace to help us in time of need. When we're in need, How many times, how long does it take us to get to the throne of grace? How many times do you try to figure it out yourself? You're in need, and so you're checking off all the boxes. I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. I'm gonna fix this problem, I'm gonna fix this problem. And finally, you get to the end of yourself, and you're like, well, maybe God can help me. Finally, you get to the end, and you're, okay, I'll I'll go to the throne of grace now. And we go into fear and trembling. God says, no, come boldly to me. Approach the throne of grace with boldness so you could receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. When we have need, we should take off running to the throne. It's the first place we should go. What's the first need that you have when you recognize that you've sinned? Forgiveness. You need forgiveness. And even as a Christian, when we still mess up and we think, oh, now I've done it, and we jump back over to the Levitical priesthood. No, you've messed up. So what, you've messed up. Get back to God because he's the one that's gonna help you stop messing up. Oh, I messed up again. Get back to the throne of grace because he's gonna help you stop messing up. Receive forgiveness. Get to the throne of grace. Humble yourself. Say, God, I need you. Go to the throne of grace and he'll give you mercy. Not punishment, not judgment. He'll give you mercy and find grace in a time of need. If Jesus is our high priest, we can approach him. The second thing is this. One more scripture. You're like, man, have I not read enough scripture today? 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. I'm going to jump in verse 4. As you come to him, Jesus, the high priest, as you come to him, a living stone, rejected by people but chosen and honored by God, you yourselves as living stones, Jesus is a living stone, and then it says, listen, because you have Jesus in you, you've become a living stone, a spiritual house, you're being built up to be a holy priesthood. You, as a believer in Jesus, are being built up to be a holy priesthood priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. What kind of priesthood are you in? Are you in the Levitical priesthood or the Melchizedek priesthood? You're not in the Levitical priesthood, but most of us jump back over there. And and you can think about this. All right, you've been called to be a holy priest, so now it's like, all right, well, I guess i got to be a Levitical guy. i got to wash my hands. i got to bring the lamb in. got to sacrifice. got to beg for mercy. got to go in fear and trembling and go find God. We jump ourselves right back to the Levitical priesthood to the law. And if the priesthood's been changed, that law needs to be changed as well. You don't have the law. You live under grace. 
Jesus came so that priesthood would come to an end and you would get a walk in the priesthood of Melchizedek, the one of mercy and grace. So when, when, when God says that you, you're being called a holy priesthood, you are holy because Jesus is holy and you get to walk in his priesthood. In other words, if you're receiving mercy and grace, you get to give mercy and grace. And you get to approach him with confidence. You get to have boldness as you go to God. You don't have to be in fear and trembling. You get to go to him because he died for you. To offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And it goes on and says, for it stands in Scripture, I lay, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and honored cornerstone. And the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. Do you believe in Jesus? If you believe in Jesus, the word says you will never be put to shame. In whose eyes? God's eyes. Oh, the world will shame you. God's got a better covenant with better promises. So honor will come to you who believe. Honor. God will honor those who approach him in the priesthood of Melchizedek. But for the unbelieving, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone to stumble over and a rock to trip over. They stumble because they disobey the word. Who is the word? Jesus. They were destined for this. Listen, the world we live in today, you can, you can worship all kinds of things and nobody will care. But when you start worshiping Jesus, everybody cares because they're offended by him. You show up today and you, you're going to go, you're going to go worship according to Buddha. The world's like, all right, do whatever your religious thing you want to do. We'll make room for that. You want, to go, you want to go worship Muhammad? All right, go ahead, worship as the Muslims do and you'll be fine. You want to go and worship anything else that doesn't have the name Jesus tied to it and the world's like, go ahead and do it. You want to worship the devil? They're like, great, let's make movies about it. Let's celebrate it all that we can. You want to, you want to be a new age worshiper and worship the earth? Well, let's champion that. You want, to, you want to entertain new age things and all kinds of hocus potions and por potions and all those kind of things? Yeah, let's do that. Let's celebrate witchcraft. Let's make movies and TV shows about that. Let's, let's drive those things all the way up. Let's make sure they're number one on the list. We're good with that. You want to show up your place of work. You want to show up at school tomorrow. And you want to worship anything but Jesus. And it's like you're totally fine. But the minute you say, I've come here to worship Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, guess what? Everybody is against you. Because they're offended by Jesus. They're offended by who he is. The minute you show up as a believer and you say, I want to worship Jesus, the world is offended by that. It is a stumbling block to those who do not believe. Do not be, dis don't, don't be misled. There is a cost to follow Jesus. And that is that people don't like you because Satan hates you. And he's going to do everything you can do to get you back in the Levitical priesthood and to get you out of the priesthood of grace. He's going to do whatever he can to make you stumble and fall. You can worship anything and anybody on this earth you want to. You want to worship celebrities? You want to worship stars? You want to worship whatever you want to worship? And people are totally fine with that. But the minute you say, I'm here to worship Jesus, they come against you. Just recognize it. It's just what's going to happen. But you know what's at the throne of everything else you worship? Works, fear, and trembling. You know what's at the throne of Jesus? Mercy and grace, mercy and grace, mercy and grace, mercy and grace. Come on, that's good news. Mercy and grace, that's what's there. When we walk in our holy priesthood, living a life to worship God, proclaiming our praises to God, walking in the light of God, walking in our God-given authority, we walk in the priesthood of Melchizedek, we actually are vessels of transformation. It goes on in verse 9 and says this, but you, you are a chosen race. The world ignores you. The world says it's over. The world says, says no, you, we'll, we'll let you worship anybody but Jesus. But they, this is what God says, you are a chosen race, race and you are a royal priesthood. You're a royal priesthood. You're not, you're not in the priesthood of the, Levit of, of the Levites. You're not of that tribe. But you've been brought in through the tribe of Judah. You've been brought in through the promises of Abraham. 
You've been worshiped. You're in the you're in the priesthood of Melchizedek, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the One who called you out of darkness and into His marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, stand with me today. Stand with me today. Listen, I just dug into something that's much deeper than some of us maybe want to know or understand. These two priesthoods. There's, there's a priesthood, there's a Levitical priesthood that just tempts us to go back even as believers, it wants us to go back and to earn our way, to work our way, and to approach God with fear and trembling. But that's not what God has for you. He says, you are not part of this anymore. I have a new priesthood where the law has been changed for you to walk in, so quit living according to the old law. Live according to my grace. You know what happens when you approach the throne of grace and you receive mercy? What happens when somebody would take your place? If you, if you were supposed to go to jail today and somebody said, I'm going to take your place. If you owed a big debt and somebody said, I'm going to pay your debt. Would you become very thankful? You begin to give honor to that person. You celebrate that person. And that is what we should do with Jesus. He has taken our debt. He's taken our place. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our lives. He's worthy of our devotion. He says, come to me when you're in a time of need. I've been praying for you. Come to me. I've been interceding for you. I know people are against you, but come to me. I'm for you. He says, draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you. Just turn to me and approach me with confidence. Come to my throne of grace. I have blessing for you. Come with boldness. Don't come in fear and trembling, but come near to me. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me is what Jesus says. He says, come to me. He says, come to me. If you're in this room today and you've never made a decision for Jesus, let's just close your eyes for a minute. I just want to, I want to present four things to you the Lord gave me this morning. If, you, if you're lost, in other words, you don't know Jesus. You've, you've maybe done a lot of religious hoops. You've, you've gone to church. You've, you've done different things. You've even prayed, but you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. There is a throne of grace that he wants you to approach. And you can feel confident when you've been forgiven. If you've never received the forgiveness of God, right now you can do that by receiving Jesus. Maybe you're, maybe you're here today and, and you've just been so disappointed because of trials and tribulations. You're just disappointed. This is the other thing God showed me was there would be some here that would be disappointed today. Some are lost. Some you don't know Jesus. Others you know him, but you've been disappointed. And so you quit going to him in your time of need and you've, you've just become more comfortable in the Levitical priesthood, if I'm being honest. And you've struggled because you need mercy, but you can't find mercy. There's another group here that's just kind of apathetic. You've just been like, you know, you see the glory of God and you don't run praising and giving God glory. You just, you see it and you're just like, eh. And you're missing this, this flow of blessing in your life because you stopped approaching the throne of grace. And then I saw some people that just had so much confusion in their mind. I saw these lies of the enemy coming to attack, and there's, there's so many lies, so many things speaking about your identity, your value, and your worth, that it's just left you in a place of confusion. Any of those four things, if you're lost, if you've been disappointed, you've been just apathetic, just going through the motions, you've been overwhelmed with lies, Today I want to help you just take those to Jesus. I just want to help you take them to him. I want to help the first group that's lost, those that don't know Jesus. You've, you've, you know about him, you know who he is, but you don't know him personally. You've never had a place where it's like, wow, my life was completely changed in that moment and I know that I'm saved. If that's you and you, you want to just surrender your life completely to Jesus today, 
why don't you just pray this prayer with me? And I just want to encourage all of you that are believers to pray it out loud as well. I just want to help those that need a little help. So let's pray this out, out loud. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of Jesus who came to establish a new law, the law of grace. And I ask you today, God, would you forgive me of my sin? Jesus, would you save me? Would you come into my life and be my savior? Would you change my life forever? I need your mercy and I need your grace. Would you come in today? Would you save me, Jesus? Would you count me as yours? Would you change my priesthood today? Father, I pray right now for those that have never known you that are praying that prayer. I ask you, Holy Spirit, would you do what you do? Would you move in their life? Would you put that seal of guarantee on them? Just as I've experienced in my own life, would you put that on them right now? Not about what they can do, but who they know. Jesus, their Savior. Would you save them? Father, I pray for those that are in the room that are disappointed. That have been disappointed. They've been disappointed with you. They've been disappointed with others. They're just... They're just disappointed and hurt. If you can name that disappointment, I encourage you to name that right now and give it to God. He says to approach his throne of grace with boldness. If you are a believer, you can go right to him right now. Even if you've been disappointed in him, it's okay. It's okay to say, God, I've been disappointed in you. Most of the time what happens is we miss something we place our discipline. The devil wants us to become disappointed in God, so we quit going to him. So if you need to approach the throne of grace right now, maybe it's, maybe you should be disappointed in, in somebody else in your life. Maybe you're disappointed in your, whatever you're disappointed in. If that's you in the room, just right now, just say, God, I want to give you whatever it is. Just give him that disappointment. Go to the throne of grace right now and give it to him. If you're in the room and you've been apathetic, you feel like you've just been going through the motions, like Maybe you're at church today just because somebody drug you here and you're like, yeah, I don't have the fire I used to have. I, I'm not, I haven't been running off giving glory and praise to God like the shepherds did. If you've just been apathetic in your heart, why don't you just confess that before God? And just say, God, I'm sorry. I've been, I've been apathetic. I've, I've let all the definitions of the world just move me out of the priesthood I'm supposed to be walking in and I've just become numb to you and I wanna ask you to forgive me today, God. I need to see your glory again. God, would you reveal your glory to me again this morning? And if you've been overwhelmed with lies of all these things trying to identify, uh, speak into your identity, identity, your value, and your worth, all kinds of things have been just pushing at you and there's been confusion in your mind. I want you to give God that. Give God. Give God that confusion right now. Father, I pray, I pray for those that are confused, those that have had lies attacking them. Right now, I rebuke the devourer off of your life. I break those lies and assignments off of you. I break the lies about your identity, who you've been called to be. I break the lies about your value and worth, how you fit in society. I break them off right now in the name of Jesus. You are not defined by other words, accusations, voices of this world, but you are defined by a loving Father, God. You are His child as a born-again believer. You are His son and His daughter. You are His, and He defines who you are. And your value was Jesus. He died, He sent Jesus. He, he loved you so much that he said, I want to be with you forever. So he sent Jesus. Your value is not what the world says about you. Your value is what God says about you. He gave everything, all of himself for you. That's what you are worth. And so Father, I pray today, right now, Lord, would freedom come to those that are lost? Would they be found? Would freedom come to those that are being disappointed? Would you bring encouragement? Father, right now, for those that have been apathetic, would you begin to stir up fresh fire within them? For those that have been confused, God, would you set them free right in this moment? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You made a way for me 
to enter your holy place you made a way for me to enter this holy place you To enter this holy place So worthy is your name Jesus You deserve the praise Worthy is your name Come on, enter the throne of grace Worthy is your name Jesus You deserve the praise is your name so worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus you deserve all my praise worthy Come on, if you can, just lift your hands to heaven for just a moment. Father God, I pray right now. Father, as we approach the throne of grace, God, I thank you there is mercy and grace for those in time of need. God, I pray right now for your mercy and your grace, giving us what we don't deserve, not getting what we do deserve. God, I pray that you'd pour that out of our lives today. Lord, would you help us to walk in the order of Melchizedek? Would you help us to walk in the royal priesthood that you put over our lives? Would Jesus, would you be our high priest? Would we stay in the covenant with you based on better promises? And we ask you today, God, that as we go, that we would walk in the abundance of your light and that darkness would be dispelled everywhere we go. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Come on. <clears throat> if you prayed to receive Christ today, if you've never done that before and you did, in that connection card, there's a place that says, I prayed to receive Christ. Would you check that off? Drop that in one of the receptacles on the way out. Me and my staff, we just want to help you take the next steps with the Lord. If you would do that, we would love to know that you prayed to receive Jesus today. And uh, you can drop that, your offering on the way out. Be blessed. We'll see you Christmas Eve, 4 and 6, Christmas Day, 10 a.m. next week. Be blessed. Have a great day. If you need prayer, there'll be people to pray with you this morning as well. This week.